Hey guys, welcome back. We have had Starlink for quite a few months now and we've noticed some good things and some bad things along the way. So today I'm just gonna go over, I think it's like seven pros and eight cons, something like that, of Starlink that we have noticed and I'm gonna kinda give you the is it worth it spiel in the end. So stick around for that if you'd like. As usual, I did write a blog post with everything I'm about to go over, so I linked kind of the Spark Notes version for you below if you want to just get the notes. I don't have my normal sunglasses with me today, but as usual, it is too bright <laughs> for me to not use them. So here we go. This video is not sponsored or anything. The reason I wanted to make it is because we had so many questions before we got Starlink, so I'm gonna try and answer a lot of those questions that we had for other people if they're considering it. So first, I'm gonna go over the pros. Number one is going to be speed. So even though Starlink is a satellite internet provider, we have found that the speeds pretty much blow all other satellite companies out of the water. Now, for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna be talking mostly about residential Starlink. Uh, we did switch a little bit back and forth between Rome and residential, which I made a whole separate video on if you're curious about how that worked, pros and cons to that one as well. But as far as residential Starlink goes, the speed in our experience has been right on par with fiber internet or fiber cable. So kind of the typical stuff that you'd get. We don't have that available in our area. So our only other option would be kind of your traditional satellite companies, which have a lot of other problems, which I'll go into in a bit. But if you're curious about the Starlink speeds, Starlink residential, ours has been fantastic, right on par with kind of your typical high-speed fiber cable, cable internet. We don't do really much gaming ourselves, so I guess I can't comment on that, but streaming, video chatting, that kind of thing, we've honestly had no issues so far. Number two pro is going to be reliability. So as far as reliability goes in terms of does it drop out on us, does it go up and down during different times of the day, we have found reliability to be, again, right on par with fiber cable internet. One of the big problems with a lot of other satellite company internet providers is that when the weather gets bad, if it gets cloudy, if it's storming, the service drops out. Now, I know that some other people have said they have experienced this on occasion with Starlink. Again, we have actually never experienced a drop in service as long as we have been on the residential plan. I will tell you that the Rome, that has been a little bit more spotty for us. It tends to go in and out. Depending on the time of day, it tends to go in and out depending on the weather. Really, basically just about the same as kind of the other satellite companies that we were using before we had Starlink. Starlink Residential, in my experience, has been reliable pretty much. Honestly, I, I cannot think of a time that it has dropped out. So, as far as reliability goes, that is another huge pro. Number three pro, this one is kind of random, but it is aesthetically pleasing in my opinion. So, the dish, which is behind me back there. So I don't know what it's called, if it's like a receiver, a dish. Um, I'm assuming it's probably a dish, but what would typically be like a big dated looking eyesore dish with most satellite companies is not the case with Starlink. It's actually super cool looking. It looks modern, it looks streamlined. I don't mind the look of it. Again, probably nitpicking here, but I'm just telling you guys what I've noticed. I know it's probably kind of a random point, but something I've noticed a pro is that it's not ugly like most traditional satellite company dishes are. Sorry guys, the wind is picking up. Number four pro, probably the most famous thing that Starlink is known for is just remote internet access and notably remote high speed internet access. Like I mentioned, we don't have fiber cable where we are. We actually do apparently have it on the road for like telephone lines, but the company said they couldn't do internet with that. So if we wanted high speed internet, we would have to basically get all, all our neighbors on board, which we don't have many of them. We would have to try and convince the company to bring service out, or we could pay tens of thousands of dollars to have them bring it out just for our home. Obviously, that's not really an option for most people. So Starlink brought us high-speed internet in basically no time at all. And like I mentioned, it has been right on par with fiber internet in terms of speed and reliability, and much, much, much cheaper than us paying a cable company to bring it out. If you are somewhere more remote than us, which is entirely possible, we're not even all that far out, then you probably don't even have the option to pay a cable company to bring it out to you and your options are gonna be limited to either Starlink or traditional satellite companies which have a lot of drawbacks, which I'll go into more like I keep mentioning. But again, number four pro is just that remote internet access that is probably impossible for people to get high speeds with otherwise. Number five pro is that it is DIY friendly. This is a little bit of a pro and a con, which I'll talk about later, 
but you pretty much set it up how you want it done. As of right now, Starlink doesn't send out a representative to set it up for you, which is unlike most other satellite companies or cable internet companies. Basically, they just ship the stuff to you and you do it yourself. So for us, that's a pro because we like to get to know the stuff we're working with. We can set it up exactly how we want it, where we want it. For other people, that might not be so much of a pro. Number six, this is very positive in my opinion, is that there are currently no long-term contracts. So with most satellite companies, you're gonna have to sign, for us it was a two plus year contract, uh, and we've had to do that before, and you actually have to pay money to get out of that contract. This is like a little bit of a soapbox for me, but I think that's horrible. I know there are like financial reasons why they do it, but um, in my opinion, if a product is good enough, then your customer is gonna stay. And I get really ticked off when you have to be financially threatened to continue using a product. So I know there are kind of like trial periods, may, I'm guessing maybe there are trial periods for that kind of thing. I don't know the ins and outs. All I know is that we have had to pay to get out of satellite with other providers before um, when high speed fiber internet became available in our area, which really stunk. So yes, I'm a little bit biased there. But the cool thing about Starlink is that as of right now, it doesn't have a years long contract. You are just on a month to month plan so it's really easy to pop in and out. Um, you know, even if you go like out of the country for a while or something, I don't know if people travel, that kind of thing, you can turn it on and off. And I think that is a huge pro. I think it's more honest business practice, but I don't have to say too much more about that. I have made my opinion known there. Finally, the number seven pro to Starlink that I will talk about is the ability to switch back and forth between residential and Rome. This is relatively new and we did try it like I mentioned, I'll link the video where I talk about the details of it. It's not totally smooth, so I'll talk about that in the cons, but you do have the ability to bring internet with you if you travel, and we do sometimes go to even more remote locations, so having that ability to bring Starlink with us and even continue to work if we need to is a huge plus. I guess it's kind of a con if you don't want the internet to follow you, um, but it does allow us to get out a little bit more, which is awesome. So there are the main pros to Starlink that I have noticed as we've been using it. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the cons that we have seen along the way. First con I'm gonna talk about is that information is changing rapidly. Starlink is relatively new to the market, but it is also a very innovative company. So they change things pretty quickly. It's not necessarily like the companies who have been around for decades. The company is not afraid to try new things and I think that's good because I think it improves the product, but it also means that anything you're reading or watching or talking to your neighbors about, which is something that we experienced, might already be dated information. It might not be true. So before we got Starlink, we talked to our neighbor who said, you could just bring Starlink with you if you move around. He had an older model. That's not so much the case anymore, and he didn't even get it that much sooner than we did. So one of the cons to Starlink is that if you are trying to research what it's like, you're looking online, you're looking, you're talking to your neighbors, anything you find online might already be dated. So definitely best to get your information directly from the Starlink website, and then outside of that, take everything with a grain of salt. Number two con, like I mentioned before, not only is it DIY friendly, but DIY is required to set up Starlink. So I'm guessing probably like handyman companies, if, if they're on top of it, they're gonna start offering Starlink setup because not everyone is able to set this stuff up. I know I wouldn't have been able to set it up. My husband does all that kind of stuff, which is great. But if you're somebody who isn't into DIY, you struggle with technology a bit, like I mentioned, as of right now, they're not gonna send a representative out to set it up for you. So you're kind of gonna be on your own there or you're gonna need to find your own help. Number three, you are going to need some open sky. Now, most of us have enough open sky. The Starlink website does kind of mention exactly what percentage of view that the uh, hardware needs to have. I don't remember it off the top of my head, but I do know that when we took Starlink up north, there were so many dense pines that we could not get service with the Starlink Rome. And since we were just traveling temporarily, it didn't make sense to rig a huge setup to get it up above the trees. If you have Starlink Residential and you're living in dense tree area, you can probably have something set up. Again, it's gonna be some more work, but it might be worth it for you to consider. That being said, definitely look around at your environment where you're living before you order Starlink right off the bat uh, because you may need to do a little extra work to get it a nice clear view of the sky. 
Number four con, even though they do offer switching between Rome and residential, it's pretty clunky as of right now in our experience. Last time I'll mention, I did a video on that. I won't go into, into it too much more here, but it was kind of a headache. It didn't really end up working for us. The billing cycle was a little funky. Uh, so definitely look into that if that's something you're considering. But if you're somebody who really never wants to take Starlink with you, if you are traveling to remote areas, then you probably don't really have to worry about this con too much. Number five, this is a huge one. Uh, Starlink might not be available in your area. We actually had to wait about three years for Starlink to become available. And during that time, we were stuck with old school satellite companies for most of it. We actually ended up getting fiber cable at our last place just a few months before we moved, which is of course how it goes, right? But during that whole time that we were waiting, the Starlink website was estimating that we would have Starlink available in about six to 12 months. And what ended up happening is they just ended up pushing it out and pushing it out and pushing it out. So thank goodness for us, Starlink literally became available the morning I was about to sign a two-year contract with a traditional satellite company, which would have had nowhere near the speeds or reliability that Starlink has. So I'm so glad that we were able to do that before we had to sign a stinking binding contract. But all this to say, definitely check and see if Starlink is available in your area before you're just kind of planning on it. If it's not available, you typically can get on a wait list. Now we do have neighbors who were on the wait list. You have to put down a one, basically a hundred bucks to get on the wait list. And Starlink became available for them at the same time that it did for us. And we weren't on the wait list. So I can't tell if there's any benefit to it or not. I guess if they're very limited uh, in terms of the people they're accepting, when they do become available in your area, it'll be to your benefit. Um, for us, it basically became the whole state became available at the same time. So I don't know how much the wait list benefited those who were on it, but if it's something that you wanna up any chances you could possibly have, definitely might be work worth looking into. Number six, another huge con, unfortunately, is the high startup costs. Now it's all how you compare it, right? So if you're comparing the startup costs to paying a fiber company tens of thousands of dollars to bring high fiber cable to your property, which I know, I personally know people who have done that, tens of thousands of dollars, which is crazy. Then Starlink obviously is a low startup cost compared to that kind of thing. But most people aren't gonna be considering that in the first place. So it can be a little surprising when people find out that the hardware isn't actually leased or rented like most cable companies or most um, like traditional satellite companies do where you just kind of borrow it and then you give it back and you never really pay that much for it. Starlink is different. We had to pay about $600 to get our hardware. And as of right now, they're not really offering a lease option. Um, they're not offering like that you can return it for a refund or every, anything. So I guess that could be considered kind of the alternative to a years long binding contract. It's the kind of thing where obviously the longer you have Starlink, the more financial sense it makes. So we know that we're not getting internet, fiber internet here anytime soon. So we didn't really worry about it being worth it or not. However, if you're in a more populated area than we are, it might take a little bit more comparing to see if it's worth the financial investment because for us it was about 600 bucks for the hardware and then we're paying around 120 bucks on top of that per month for the service fortunately the monthly fee is actually less than the traditional satellite companies which have lower speeds and much worse reliability so it's kind of a no-brainer for us but that high startup cost should definitely be noted Number seven con I'll touch on really quickly is just what I was just talking about, but it may make more or less financial sense depending on your area. So if you live somewhere where fiber internet is available, I know people actually who have Starlink and fiber internet just cause it's cool. It's kind of cool to get into and uh, I guess have that backup if you want it. And some people are just really, I don't know, there's like a whole culture behind it. That's not why we got it. Uh, we're not necessarily pro or con the culture. We just needed internet. We do think it's cool though. But all that to say, definitely look into all of your options. If you're like us and traditional satellite is your only other option, then it's a lot easier. But if you have other options that are high speed or fiber cable, then you're definitely gonna need to weigh the cost a little bit more. Finally, the number eight con that I'll talk about is another biggie. Um, there is currently no customer service phone number for Starlink. So if you have problems, you basically need to be a current customer. And my understanding is that you need to submit a ticket and that it can take a little bit for that ticket to be resolved. Again, I'm only talking about things that other people have told me here because fortunately we have never had a reason to need to contact customer service. 
So this hasn't necessarily been a con for us, but I do know it's a problem for other people, uh, especially if you're someone who really wants to talk to someone on the phone. Again, we've never had to contact them. We don't know how long it would take if we needed to, but I guess the reason that I don't have too much of an issue with it is because a lot of times the phone customer service is basically just repeating the same things around the FAQ site. And a lot of times if it's a real issue, you kind of have to wait to get your ticket, I don't know, advanced or bumped up to somebody else. So all that to say, I don't want to say con, there's no customer service. It's a huge con. Um, just because we haven't personally needed to, but I'm sure for people who have needed to have customer service that that could be a very frustrating thing, uh, especially if you, you know, you're paying a pretty penny for service that if it's not working, uh, I could definitely see how that would be very frustrating. So those are really the seven pros and I guess eight cons that I have noticed since we've had Starlink. Every case is going to be different whether or not it's really worth it for you. There are obviously a lot of factors to consider. As far as personal experience goes, we definitely consider it worth it. I'm sure you guessed that by the way I was talking throughout the whole video, but we are frankly just so glad to have Starlink. Having lived on traditional satellite internet and working from home has been quite a challenge. Definitely not a sob story. I'm not trying to make it seem like it's horrible. There are definitely much worse things in the world than that. But now that we have this available, we are so grateful for it. We think that the trade-offs are well worth the service that we've been getting. So that is just our experience. I know other people may not agree with us and that is totally okay. In fact, if you have experience with Starlink, whether it's been a positive experience or a negative experience, we would love if you would leave a comment below so that we can get as much information and experience out there as possible. I hope this was somewhat helpful for somebody. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.